I'm Katrina and this is Sew and Tear. Now today I'm going to be sharing my quail aviary with you. So I set this up specifically for uh, deep bedding and for Paternix quail. Here we go. So first off I have a low area that has about two and a half feet of shade cloth. That's by design as my uh, before I didn't have it and the cat that is the neighborhood cat came over and scared one of my quail to death so that's a that's a predator barrier uh, something else that happens with quail is that they will stop laying eggs if there is predator presence and so this seems to have been working the neighborhood cat uh, still comes around he looks in through the shade cloth and the quail don't generally see him, he can still have quail TV. Uh, the second thing you'll notice is that this is quite a bit up off of the ground, the entryway. And the reason for that is for deep litter. Deep litter is a way to um, to deal with um, the mess of poop. So, inside I have there's a little little girl who's made herself a little hole to sit in. Anyway, inside I have a sandbox and so I, I can open it and clean it out and whatever in here. And right now I have these uh, quit these feeders. Oh, we have the dust bather. <laughs> so they do like to dust bathe in the chips. And they are quite cute when they do so. So they'll find bugs and stuff in these as well. Um, anyway, I'm going to talk about feeders in another video. But these have quail sized holes in them. Because they are known to make a mess otherwise. And for some reason this week they've decided to start laying eggs everywhere instead of in particular areas. Um, I have this set up as the the drinking setup. It is tall enough that they can walk under it. Thank you for demonstrating, little one. Um, that way they're not walking on top uh, and, you know, messing in the cups. But it's also low enough that they can reach. And uh, as this is a deep litter um, system, the floor is going to change height. So. If it's too low, I put bricks there and they can stand on the bricks and get it. It's perfectly fine. Um, so here is, oh, there's another egg. There was the entrance. Well, they keep on kicking stuff in it. Anyway, there's the entrance to the, to the uh, <clears throat> sandbox. And then underneath here, I have a quail laying an egg, maybe. <laughs> they like to lay eggs there. Thank you, lady. And that sound right there was the after song. So in these two containers um, under here, I have their, their limestone grit, which has calcium. And sometimes I give them crushed up eggshells, which I bake first. <laughs> Um, this is an old feeding system that I don't use. It worked fine for months and months and months until they figured out... My goodness, stop playing. Until they figured out um, they could get all of the, all of the uh, feed out of there and make a mess and I was not happy with them then. So, um, over here in this corner that's where, where they had the broody they went broody last, uh, in the summer. They had, they actually hatched one, but I have this set up now. Need to clean that off. That is where they're supposed to lay the majority of their eggs. They've been laying about half of them have been laying there. For some reason this week, they've decided to lay pretty sporadically, but that's okay. So, I also have 
a pitchfork in here. It's going to be hard to show. Anyway, they tend to concentrate their, their activity around the outside, and you get, well, this is about a week and a half. I should have done it a week in, but um, kind of poop on the top. Ooh, my goodness, we're flighty today. So what I do is I just poke it in, break it up, and it kind of buries it. And then the, the quail will come in Watch out. The quail will come in and um, pick through that and eat little bugs and, and all that. It doesn't take that long. And anyway, so I just do that. Um, and it seems to keep everything in check pretty well. Uh, another feature I have is this rope light. So. I am putting light on my quail to have eggs through the winter. They need 16 to 18 hours of light in order to lay. So that is the amount I have it set on an automatic timer to come on in the morning and the evening hours to give them some extra light. Um, and there's a couple things that I need to do still on this aviary. Um, they really do enjoy having a plant in here. and. One of that is that this tarp I put on for the for the winter. It's not big enough. Okay, over here. And on the end, it just goes to the end. And so I need to make an awning basically all the way around so that water doesn't go in. Um, and that's pretty much my aviary. And again, the ladies have been laying all over the place. You can see this guy's going to come and pick through this already. They know the drill. <laughs> so, they know the drill, they know that I'm going to come in here and do that and because I do it regularly, it doesn't disrupt them. If you were to come in and only do that once every, you know, few weeks or something, that might be disruptive. But they know what it, what it's all about. They know they're going to get to pick through stuff after I've done it. And uh, it's just a way to cycle the, the nutrients in here. And eventually, this will come out as compost. So... Um, I started them with deep bedding. I started with pine shavings from the store because that's what was available. Uh, you can use pretty much any wood chip type thing, you know, um, the <clears throat> tree trimmers and stuff. They'll have a, they'll have a, um, you know, truckload, that, which is what I got. Um, this next load that I got was uh, redwood. And as far as I can tell, redwood is, is okay. Cedar is the one that is not okay. Oh, we have some romance. Um, so don't do cedar. But other than that, this is the aviary. And I'm not done with my food changing. We have lots of flyers today for some reason. But... Um, my plan is to put uh, a tube on top of this feeder and make it so that it's more of a several day feeder instead of a multi day feeder. Right now it's like two to three days worth of food. I try and fill it, you know, before it goes empty. This little girl's happy. Oh, of course she stopped making sound as soon as I put the camera on her. So, got some happy birds in here. Um, there's the sandbox again. And in here, I did... <clears throat> I did do... I'm going to have to take this all the way off. Oh, hi guys! <laughs> I have to clean out the wood shavings in there soon. They are funny to watch, though. So 
So dust bathing is important for for these guys. I got the sand from Lowe's. It's just play sand. I know you're confused because there's there's light in there, huh? So what I was gonna say is there's a step right there um, to keep the sand in because it does get pretty dusty in there. Another reason to have a sandbox is just for your own entertainment. They're hilarious. So this is the area I just turned over. And they're all picking through now. Hi, dude. So that's the aviary. And any questions, write it below. Thanks. Bye.